What do you think of the idea of national service to pay for college tuition? Would you work to establish such a program? I'm not sure I understand the question. National service, so, so having the federal government created? Well, since you would be in the state, would you, I guess the question would be, would you be in favor of it? Well, I think there are certain avenues already in place where the federal government provides low interest loans to people to go to school. Um, I think I'm hearing from a number of constituents that they have even come out of uh, schools after four years or five years and are having a problem paying those loans. Uh, I can't say that given the federal government's current deficit situation uh, and the state's current deficit situation, uh, that moving toward another program to provide something to someone that we can't afford really serves anyone that well. Um, my opponent early on talked about my vote on an issue regarding providing heating oil assistance to some measure of the population in the state of Connecticut. What he didn't tell you is the bill that got passed is going to run out of money in the middle of January. So imagine that. You get to sit there and make a decision about whether you're going to fund a program at a level we don't get the money from the federal government for, and we know going in that the very same people that stood in line, turned in their, their uh, application, and then faithfully participated in the program from now till the middle of January are going to get their heat turned off because they chose not to reevaluate the program and reprioritize the dollars. He knows as well as I know, if he listened to any of the dialogue that occurred during that public hearing and the committee meetings, that I advocated for keeping everybody into the program within the dollars that we were going to get for the federal government. But he seems to find great interest in misrepresenting what I did and why I did it. And so if we're going to do the same thing in terms of trying to fund some federal health, uh, education program, I guess I would ask him, do we continue to deficit spend? And if so, is it going to be the state that's going to deficit spend to provide the education assistance, or is it going to be the federal government? Uh, well, to answer the question, yes, I fully support the idea of a service program to, pay for college, to help people pay for colleges. I do this because I took advantage of such a program. When I joined the Army National Guard, um, I served, I went to a basic training, I served two weeks a year, and, 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 then, and then one weekend a month, and in return, I, I received uh, a, tuition, a tuition payment to attend the University of Connecticut. Um, due to that, because of that, and, and some good fortune otherwise, I was able to, uh, uh, I was able to get out of college without any debt. Um, I was very lucky. The average college student who comes out of graduates from a Connecticut institution is saddled with $26,000 worth of debt. So before they've gotten a job, which is getting more difficult as we know, um, before, they've, uh, before they've gotten married, before they've gotten a house, before they've gotten a car, uh, they're holding a $26,000 uh, uh, debt. Uh, that's, that's why it's important to find ways to put people through, second, through higher education. Um, you need higher education to be competitive in the global workforce. So we have to find ways to make it affordable. One way we can do that is through service programs like this. Um, I would expand the National Guard type program that, that I took advantage of um, to, uh, to, to people who are willing to serve in other ways throughout the state. Not every, for everybody, maybe the military is the answer. Uh, but if somebody was, was willing to volunteer their time in school, if somebody was able to volunteer their time uh, working for a public works department, if, if the young people in the state are willing to give back to the state and willing to work for the state and provide service to the state, I think we should provide them uh, to enough tuition assistance so that they aren't burdened with uh, enormous debt when they get out of college. Um, that's, uh, I, think, I think that's imperative. I, think it's, uh, I, I don't think we do, uh, do a service to our, to our, to our children uh, when, 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 we, when we have a system that's so unaffordable. Get the next question to start. Do you favor campaign finance reform? I do. I do 100%. Um, let me say that campaign finance reform, I would say I feel about it the same way Winston Churchill felt about democracy. And that it's the worst possible situation, the worst possible uh, government except for all the others. Uh, campaign finance reform is, is not perfect. Um, on some level, I don't like the idea of public funds going to uh, pay for campaigns. Uh, but when you see the amount of money that's being spent in campaigns, especially above, uh, above Craig and Mike's ticket here, uh, I, I, think, I think that it, it's really the best possible solution. Um, money is, uh, is dangerous to politics. 
and, and, and we currently have too much money in the system. I don't think there's anybody who wouldn't agree with that. Um, I don't like the idea of advertisements that, that, don't, uh, that don't have people telling you who they are, who it's funded by. Um, I think that the system can only get more and more skewed as more and more money comes, comes in. Uh, with the citizens' election program, we're able to make sure that people uh, that, that people uh, are accountable strictly to the voters uh, by raising money um, in, in, in small amounts. Uh, another byproduct of this can of, of the citizens' election program that we have here in Connecticut is that we have more uncontested uh, races this year uh, than we had at any time since uh, since 1998. So we're at a, at 26% or something like that. We're at an all-time uh, we're at, we're at a 10-year low in uncontested races. And obviously, uh, you know, having two people who can go back and forth and bring new ideas to the table is what a democracy needs and what's good for good for democracy. And that's why I'm sure Craig, you know, uh, was was a part of the program in his last campaign. Um, I'm not sure whether the question means does the current program need reform or do I support it in general. Uh, but but I, I guess if I take a stab at it, uh, the state of Connecticut. Uh, budgets about a hundred million dollars a year in what they call the cheats fund. Uh, those are the nickels that people don't collect, the savings accounts they never claim, uh, unclaimed property, gift certificates, and so on. A little over 18 million dollars of that hundred million goes into the citizens election fund on an annual basis. And usually there's a bump in the four year uh, cycle, which is the year that we're in. Uh, I think this year there's an estimated expenditure of something around $61 million. And so my opposition, as I think I stated in the paper uh, yesterday, was I think given the needs that the state of Connecticut has, that there are other places that we can use that money. The bill that was originally passed has been determined to be unconstitutional. The bill went so far as to say that certain people in the state of Connecticut couldn't make the same contribution that others could make. So for instance, if my opponent was not running for office, uh, but in fact a lobbyist, he was barred from making any contribution, even if he supported me and had supported me for the 20 years prior. And so the court said you can't take away someone's free speech on that issue. This year the legislature met and a decision was made to allow that contribution this year and then the supermajority took it away in December. So I do think that the campaign finance program that currently exists is still in need of reform. I've offered suggestions, as others have, to reduce the size of the grant. If my opponent feels that public dollars should be used for this purpose, then perhaps the way that it could be used better would be in smaller quantities, especially when you get toward the end of uh, a process of uh, the politics and the election. Uh, theoretically, tomorrow someone could get a check in the House race uh, $26,000. Thank you. Thank you.